Hello, Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will understand about the stress physiology. So, the, uh, what is the stress physiology? Let's begin to understand what is the benefit and harmful effect. The stress response is the system is designated to respond to stress in a balanced way. So, the balanced way is very important, which that will lead to normal person. And some stress actually beneficial for keeping the brain and body in tip-top shape. But good stress is known as the use stress. The use stress can be a cold exposure for the short duration of time, fasting for the short duration of time, excitement and new challenges. Which that will lead to get more learning, more improve the brain as well as more, more improve the body like exercise, endurance and hard exercise or running. The chronic stress is the HPA dysfunction, hypothalamic uh, pituitary adrenal axis dysfunction will lead to adrenal fatigue, stop responding to cortisol leading to corti cortisol resistance. Due to the uh, cortisol resistance, due to the cortisol receptor resistance, and body lose to respond everyday stressors. In this way, this will lead to chronic stress, will lead to harmful. Here is the brain. The physiology of the stress we will understand, but first we will understand about the stress. The HPA axis. The HPA axis is the communication network between the HPA mean the H mean the hypothalamus, P mean the pituitary gland and A mean the adrenal gland. So this is the communication network between these uh, three things. So the hypothalamus are present in the brain. Whenever the stimuli will trigger the higher brain cortex, the cerebral cortex, which that will lead to trigger the hypothalamus. By a several mechanism, we will not understand about that. Higher brain cortex and sympathetic nervous system activation due to the stimuli like jobless, the death of family members, inflation rate increase, overeating, fasting, cold exposure, heart exposure and exercise like heart exercise and the sleeplessness, overload and glucagon increase when the insulin will decrease. Anyhow. This is the hypothalamus, contain a neuron, which that will lead to trigger the pituitary gland, adenohypophysis. Because pituitary gland made up of two lobes, uh, basically three lobes, adenohypophysis, neurohypophysis and median lobe. We will learn about the adenohypophysis contain cells. This cell will trigger via a hypothalamus due to the stimulation. Uh, through a stimuli response will lead to produce the corticotropin hormone CRH which that will bond with the CRH receptor with the cell of the adenohypophysis will lead to produce the hormone adrenocorticotropic releasing hormone. This will lead to increase in the blood circulatory system will lead to target for the long duration but remember it will bond with the ACTH or uh, with the adrenal cortex but not bind with the medulla but the quick response due to the stimulation of the stress will lead to adrenergic neuron activation to bind same mechanism the ACTH bind with the adrenal cortex but this is a quick response like fear and running suddenly suddenly attack anyhow this is a cortisol will rush into the blood circulatory system from the adrenal gland in this way the hypercortisol level will lead to get the negative feedback for the inhibition for the normal person because the chronically it is not requiring so the negative feedback mechanism to stop our production of cortisol will lead to normal physiology function anyhow the cortisol will target to the several tissue but anyhow the opposite of this sim uh, opposite of this stress is the stimulator for rest due to the relaxation and sleeping will produce the parasympathetic nervous system activation to hypothalamus to pituitary gland adenohypophysis will release the growth hormone this growth hormone is known as the somatostatin hormone 
the somatostatin will inhibit the catabolism while the cortisol will trigger the catabolism but the growth hormone will increase the anabolism from the metabolism so the insulin when drop proteolysis will increase and glu glycogenolysis and atp and glucagon will increase due to the cortisol hormone in this way it will target to the uh, muscle due to the exercise triacylglycerol will convert into the free fatty acid is known as lipolysis glycogenolysis to produce more glucose in the blood circulatory system in this way the hyperglycemia will occur while this growth hormone will inhibit this catabolism and trigger the glycogenesis and gluconeogenesis oh sorry glycogenolysis and the insulin secretion and the glucagon will suppress while the insulin will increase when we will eat the treatment is the sleep properly manage the stress eat with healthy food relax yourself like relax with the several strategy you can use to relax yourself for inhibit the stress well anyhow let's begin to understand the biological stress with the cellular mechanism for example exercise fasting cold heart hypoxia and other things and the low level of the glucose will lead to increase the amp while the decrease the atp the amp increase will lead to uh, activate the ampk pathway and glute 4 channel vesicle will not bind with the plasma membrane and in this way the glucose will not move inside mtor c1 and 2 will inhibit and on the other hand the cell survival will occur so this stress is very important for cell survival and realize itself uh, the hard time to survive again for the hard time resistance starvation and glycogen and lipid will decrease due to the starvation when we will not take food while the heart stress is will lead to also activate the dna to produce the heat shock protein and hypoxia will also and the cold will lead to also produce the that gene activation for the thyroid gland to produce t3 and t4 so in this way the survival ship is important in this way, the DNA will lead to survival gene activation like CIT1 gene. And in this way, the cells survive and adapt and no proliferate and differentiate. In this way, the cell will survive will lead to longevity of the cell increase to increase lifespan of the individual. Anyhow, the biological clock moves back and survive more, live longer. That is why the activation of the longevity gene due to the possible we are a biological stress for the short duration while the chronic stress means the long duration of the stress will lead to hpa dysfunction and in this way the hpa dysfunction will lead to chronic stress lead to cortisol receptor resistance and no response in daily task in this way we will go the chronic uh, stress will lead to uh, uh, cortisol resistance will lead to many complications and we will not feel the stress because the stress feeling is very important for correct it and learn it and how to prepare and how to prepare yourself how to correct yourself and what is your fault what is your mistake that is all thing is due to the stress correction the stress correction is too much important for the normal physiology of the body and live longer but the biological stress is a, long, a shorter duration you can correct while the chronic stress will lead to damage your body and in this way the damage your body will lead to cause many many complications like many disease so thanks for watching if you like my video please make sure to subscribe like and share and this video was about the stress physiology and the biological stress how it can interact in our body physiology and how to change the body physiology through stress again i am uh, uh, again again i am repeating that the stress is helpful and harmful but the helpful is the biological stress for the short duration while the long duration is known as the chronic stress which that is the harmful thanks for watching bye